awesome. Okay. Sure, I will. Going, going. We're good to go if you want to press start. Okay, give me a moment. No problem. Is everyone able to see this, uh, see my screen that I'm sharing? It's up, it's up now. Yes, okay, great. I'm gonna start the webinar, everybody. Good luck, Thank you. have fun. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to wait a few moments while people uh, get logged in to our Zoom and YouTube presentation. Uh, just hang in there. We'll be with you in just a few moments. And again, if you're just joining us, if you could just be patient while we allow our parents and guardians and grade eight students to log in, uh, we'll be starting in just a few moments. Thank you to all of our grade eight students and families for joining us. We are going to get started in a minute. You'll notice that the chat function is not available, but the question and answer, the Q&A is. We would ask that if you just hold out for a little bit, um, we're probably going to answer many of your questions throughout the presentation. Uh, but if you do ask any questions in the Q&A, we do have a, a whole bunch of guidance counselors from our secondary schools who are available to answer those questions for you. And we will get started shortly. Georgia, do you think we're ready to go? Uh, yes, I do actually think that we're ready to go. So once again, I want to uh, thank everyone for coming out this evening for our top 10 tips and considerations for the transition to high school. Uh, this, this evening, uh, we are hoping to help our grade eight families and students uh, with the important information that they need to consider as we navigate through grade eight to grade nine. If we could move to the next slide. Before we begin, I will do our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and the Inuit peoples. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like to do a couple of introductions. Uh, these individuals have been key in supporting tonight's presentations. Uh, Andrew Gould, who is here with us this evening, is our Associate Director of Learning Leadership and School Improvement. Uh, Karen Faulkner, who participated in yesterday's sessions, uh, is our Associate Director of Equity, Wellbeing and School Improvement. Uh, Dr. Renee Rawlings, uh, who is our Coordinator for Guidance and Career Development, and myself, our Program Coordinators in various areas uh, that are really important 
important to the transition to grade uh, nine, academic pathways, secondary math, virtual school, e-learning, um, uh, French as a second language, classical and international languages. We also have present today an outstanding representation of our secondary school guidance counselors uh, from all of the schools that you see listed here. Uh, these counselors have volunteered their time from families this evening uh, to help us with questions and answers uh, that come up during the presentation. Uh, we really couldn't do it without these schools. While you may not see the specific school that your child uh, may uh, be applying to or wish to attend, uh, please note um, that uh, this, the setup for this evening is more of a general presentation, um, although we will make every attempt to answer all of the questions that are taking place. Um, we are currently taping this session, um, both uh, through uh, our YouTube uh, live channel as well as here on Zoom, uh, and we will be posting the presentation um, at, uh, as soon as we're able on our TDSB guidance page so that you can review any of the information that has been shared. Uh, please also note uh, one of our interpreters uh, who is working in the background, um, we, we have some technical glitches, so if you have requested uh, interpretation for Portuguese, please note that we are working on it and if you can uh, be patient as we sort that through. So without further ado, I would like to uh, pass things along uh, to Andrew Gold, our Associate Director. Uh, thanks, Georgia, and good evening, everyone. It's nice to join you. Um, I want to start by, first of all, thanking uh, Georgia and Renee for um, um, helping us as an organization become adaptable and creative during these very complex and changing times. Um, this is the first year in which we've done virtual sessions for the system as a whole for not just grade eight to nine transition, but a few weeks ago, we did a post-secondary evening virtually and uh, their efforts to support our thousands of students, their families, as well as our staff who are doing this work in their own schools is greatly appreciated. I also wanna thank um, our parent and community engagement office, uh, those who help organize our interpreting uh, so, um, support, as well as all of the secondary school uh, guidance staff who are with us uh, this evening to keep the chat uh, flowing uh, in a timely manner. I want to uh, say to our students and parents who are joining us tonight, I was a secondary school vice principal and principal a number of years ago. And one of the most exciting times for me every year was when we welcomed grade eight families into the various buildings I led to help them understand high school and the choices that lay in front of them. I remember those evenings were full of excitement and a little bit of trepidation and anxiety for, for, our, student, for our future students and for their families because of the decisions that need to be made over the coming months. I also know that our students, this year's grade eight class has not had a usual grade seven and eight experience. And that is why the TDSB, your principals, your teachers, guidance staff are doing whatever we can to make sure that resources and information is available to you in multiple ways. I wanna remind you that separate of these opportunities, uh, your teachers, your vice principals and principals are there to support you as you continue along this journey. And I know that by the time you finish making decisions and start uh, looking forward to whatever high school you end up attending, um, that well, it might be um, an anxiety creating experience at the start, by the time you make those decisions, um, you will be looking forward to the start of, of an amazing high school career. And so without further ado, because we've got a full presentation, I'll turn it back to our team. And thanks again for attending tonight. Thank you, Andrew. So I'll get us started on our top 10 tips and consideration for the transition to high school. And the first question that families often have is, what is my homeschool and how can I find out what it is? Well, we have worked hard to update the TDSB website to help families search schools. To find your school, simply go to the TDSB site and click find your school from the top menu or type on the link on the screen. You will search your school by address. 
Once you type in your street, the site will inform you of your designated school based on your address, and this is what is known as your home school. As you can see, you can also find a TDSB school by name and by program using this site. Optional attendance has been a source of many questions for grade eight families. So I'll take a moment to review some key pieces that I'm sure have been reviewed by your grade eight schools, but we will talk about them again this evening. I hope to answer the following questions. What specialized programs or alternative schools are there? How does the French immersion and extended French pathway work? How about applying to specialized programs or regular programs at a school other than your home school? and which schools are closed to optional attendance. Please know that students have the opportunity to access schools outside of the one that's designated to serve your residential address by applying through optional attendance. Acceptance at these schools is subject to space availability and students can apply to two specialized programs and two regular programs through optional attendance. On the screen are the specialized programs that are at the TBSB. As you can see, we have schools and specialized programs in the areas of arts, athletics, STEM, leadership, and IB. And if you recall that Find Your School page that I showed you a couple slides earlier, you can search for these schools by program. Each specialized program has its own application and admission process and deadlines. The application process could include an audition, an interview, an exam, a portfolio, a tryout. You should visit each school website or contact the school directly to find out what those admission and application details are. You are able to apply to two regular programs and two specialized programs, as I mentioned before. And when you're filling out your optional attendance form for your specialized programs, you can forward them to your elementary principal for signing. TDSB programs and pathways with regards to French immersion and extended French. Let's go back. Students can qualify for the certificate in bilingual studies in French immersion upon the completion of 10 credits in French. Students can qualify for this certificate in bilingual studies in extended French upon the completion of seven credits in French. Students can continue their French immersion or extended French program at your designated pathway school, which can be found at the link on the, on, um, the site, on the page. Students who have mo moved into a pathway area of a new French immersion or extended French secondary school may transfer there and not use optional attendance. However, if you'd like to attend a French immersion or extended French secondary school that is not in your designated pathway, you would apply to that school on optional attendance. So of course, the next question is, which schools are close to optional attendance with regards to French immersion and extended French? And on the screen are the list of schools whose French immersion or extended French program are closed to optional attendance. I'll give you a moment to take a look. So also there are some schools that are close to optional attendance for their regular program. Given that this presentation is Learning Center one and four, the schools that are close to optional attendance in Learning Centers one and four are Lawrence Park, Leaside, Mark Garneau, North Toronto, York Mills, Humberside, Harvard, Malvern, and Riverdale. In the TDSB, we are so proud to have so many alternative schools in our board. Alternative schools are safe, highly engaged, smaller school environments. They use non-traditional hands-on approaches to learning. Each school has a distinct identity and focus, such as democratic education, holistic learning, physical art, mindful living, entrepreneurship, social justice, community outreach, and more. These schools are ideal for students seeking an alternative to mainstream education and who want to take an active role in their own learning. 
TDSB alternative schools are open and free to any resident of Toronto. Spaces, space in alternative schools is limited and students can apply to attend on optional attendance. And the application process is different for each alternative school. On the screen are some key secondary optional um, attendance key dates. On January 29th is when the optional attendance forms are due at the secondary school. As I mentioned before, optional attendance forms must be signed by your elementary principal. For those of you who are attending virtual elementary school, you would be sending your optional attendance form to your bricks and mortar, your physical home elementary school that you might have attended last year. And that principal will be the one who signs your optional attendance form and keeps track of your optional attendance schools that you've applied to. The first week of February is when an optional attendance lottery will be held if required. And that basically means that for those schools that are able to accept optional attendance forms, if there are limited spots, they'll hold a lottery to fill those spots. February 12th is the deadline for you as parents and guardians and students to be informed of the status of your optional attendance application request. So you'll find out if you were able to get into the school or not. February 26th is the deadline for all the course selection to be due at the secondary schools. So let me just talk briefly around the course selection process for grade eight students before we jump into it um, in the next slides in terms of timeline. So I, I'm sure that you all will notice that uh, February 12th is when you will find out if you've gotten into uh, the school of your choice. However, you may have already started the course selection process at your schools. Just know that through my blueprint, you are certainly able to select courses at any TDSB high school. We encourage you to select courses at your home school. And as you recall from a few slides ago, you would find that school based on your address and then to select courses at any school where you have applied through optional attendance. So you can do that as soon as course selection opens up, which is uh, towards the beginning of January, and we will talk about those dates shortly. I'll pass this over to Georgia to talk more specifically about the grade nine course selection process. And uh, thank you very much, Renee. And just before I, I begin uh, with that aspect of my presentation, uh, I have uh, looked at a couple of the questions that have come in related to um, optional attendance, uh, applying for specialized programs and timelines, gifted um, questions, as well as uh, French immersion questions. Uh, so uh, that February 12th date uh, is when all the schools are that you've applied to are going to let you know by that by that date, uh, whether or not um, you have been successful. And you very well may have uh, a couple of options before you. You always have the option to attend your home school. You have an option to attend if you're accepted um, on optional attendance at different school, um, or if you've applied for uh, a specialized program or school, if you're successful in that regard. So you may have to make a decision once you get all the information um, that you need. You should not be feeling pressured into making a decision until you have all the information that you need to make that determination. Um, I will speak about special education and gift it as we go forward, uh, just in terms of the uh, French immersion uh, piece. Um, if you are staying uh, in French immersion, going from grade eight to grade nine, there is a pathway school that's already been predetermined uh, for you uh, within your learning center area. And your grade eight French immersion teacher um, would be the first point of contact for you to discuss, just because we have so many different schools that offer French immersion, um, they, they would be the ones that would assist you in making that determination of what your, what your school is. So grade nine course selections. Uh, I want to talk initially about academic pathways uh, because in, in the past and many of our parent and guardians who are here um, uh, perhaps have had children go through high school in the TDSB or elsewhere in the province. Um, there has always been a traditional option to select 
uh, academic courses or applied courses. Uh, many years ago, the TDSB embarked on uh, uh, an, an initiative to uh, ensure that our, that our learners have every opportunity post-secondary that's possible. And through our research, we determined that uh, students who were streamed into applied courses in grade nine uh, really had those options reduced significantly. So we've been working over the last number of years uh, to ensure that our grade eight students and our grade nine uh, and high schools are prepared to receive all of our learners at an academic level. And that is going to take place starting in September. In addition to that academic pathway, as we call it, um, the Ministry of Education for the entire province is also moving uh, to de-stream um, grade nine and grade 10 courses. And in fact, next year will be the very first year for the new grade nine math curriculum. And this is a de-streamed grade nine course. So it's not academic and it's not applied. And in due time, the rest of those, those uh, courses that uh, uh, students Students taking grade nine will also uh, be rewritten with that in mind. So the courses uh, that the students will take at the academic level are geography, English, French, math, and science. Um, so students uh, have to take those courses, they're compulsory courses, and they will be taken at the academic level. So there's nothing uh, to determine uh, that way. Um, the other options, uh, there are three other courses that students take. There is a physical education course, which is at the open level. Uh, students have a choice between um, business technology or family studies. Um, and that will be a choice uh, that a child makes. Um, and then there's an arts credit. And most schools offer uh, quite a few of the arts. So it could be drama, it could be music, it could be vocal. Um, and students will have to make a selection in terms of, uh, of one of those um, one of those courses. Uh, and th that essentially is grade nine course selection in a, in a nutshell. Most of it for grade nine is prescribed uh, because we're working toward the compulsory aspect of the courses that the students need for graduation uh, at the end of grade 12. When you are um, uh, making these selections, you will be using an application called My Blueprint. And many of our grade eight students uh, were introduced to my blueprint when they were in grade seven. All of our high school students use it um, for course selection process. Uh, and uh, the, the, but for many of you, this may be your first time using my blueprint. We have a brief video that we're going to play for you to uh, show you, you know, the functionality of my blueprint. Um, and I'll talk to you again on the other end of the video. Uh, Renee, if you could run the video now. Hello, and welcome to the My Blueprint course selection video series. In this video, we are going to show you how a grade eight student with TDSB will complete their course selections. Start by visiting www.tdsb.on.ca slash find your forward slash school. Select by address. Enter your street name. Note, you will not need to add your full address, simply the street name. Click search. This will display your destination secondary school. If you are looking to apply for a specialized program, you may also locate your secondary school by searching using the by program option. Upon determining your destination secondary school, simply visit www.myblueprint.ca forward slash TDSB. Click the green school account login button and enter your TDSB credentials to log into your MyBlueprint account. Upon login, simply click High School from the left-hand navigation menu. Click Add Plan and select your destination high school from the drop-down menu. Once course selection is open for TDSB students, upon login, students will see the course selection steps appear at the top of their high school grid. Step one is to add courses. Click either a subject name or the add course button to begin exploring opportunities within that school. Click add course to add this to your plan. 
TDSB students entering grade nine are expected to select eight total courses plus two alternate courses. Once your student has added all of the courses to their plan, click the blue review course selections button. Step two is to officially review the selections. Once the review is complete, select submit selections. Upon submission, students are notified of a successful submission to their destination secondary school. Once students have submitted their selections, they may wish to return to the high school plan. Students will notice that the course selection checklist now displays the submission date and time. Students are no longer able to make adjustments to the submitted courses. If changes are needed, students will need to speak to their classroom teacher. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns surrounding My Blueprint, please speak with your student's teacher or email us at support at myblueprint.ca. So as you can see from the short video that we just showed, um, it is a fairly straightforward process for course selection. A uh, couple of things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, your child, uh, number one, has a TDSB login uh, email address as well as a password. It's the same uh, login uh, that they use for a school computer. Uh, and that's what they need to get into the My Blueprint uh, forward slash TDSB. Um, they can go in anytime. They could go in right now if they uh, chose to, um, and they could play around. And we actually encourage that, take a look at what different schools have. Um, uh, but what, what they will not be able to do yet uh, is to actually submit courses. We're not opening that up as a system uh, until January, um, and that's when uh, the selections uh, can be made. The other thing uh, that I want to say is, even though a student, uh, just say your child is applying to their home school, which we encourage, um, uh, as well as say a specialized program or a optional attendance at a school that's open for optional attendance. Um, the, the, the only courses that will ultimately be sent is to the school that you choose to attend. So uh, if you uh, make a decision to apply to uh, Western Tech, to Runnymede and to Jarvis, and uh, those are the schools that you're selecting. Um, ultimately, uh, in, in the background through our Trillium application, we will then transfer uh, the identity of the student to the new school, and then your My Blueprint information will be also uploaded in that way. Uh, so some of the schools um, have started, uh, you know, with their students in terms of investigating My Blueprint. And, and again, we encourage uh, students to explore this on their own, uh, to, to go in at any time and to, to try to navigate uh, the various pieces so that if you do have questions when you do have a presentation at school or you, you work on some of this as part of your grade eight school, uh, you know what questions you have and, and you would like to ask. If we can move on oh, to the I'm next to slide. Course selection. I wanted to spend a little bit of time on special education and the transition of our students who have a special education designation. And that comes into play in two different ways, either as a formal identification or an informal identification. So the formal identifications that have taken place for IPRC, um, there will be an identity that is attached uh, as part of the special education um, plan. And that could be a designation of physically handicapped. It could be a designation of developmental disability. It could be a designation of gifted, a uh, designation of learning disability, uh, mild intellectual disability or MID. Um, and for those for those students, the process is a parallel process with our traditional grade uh, eight to grade nine transition. 
Uh, with the formal identifications, uh, there is a review process that takes place in the spring. And it very well uh, will not take place until after the optional attendance and uh, after the uh, decision making around which high school to attend. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's really important that you not feel, uh, you know, that, oh, I really want to go to gift it, but they haven't made the decision yet. Um, uh, if the offer of placement for a student who is formally identified comes after um, our regular dates and that all finish up before the March break, um, you still can accept that offer of placement once it comes in for special education. Um, we have 10 high schools in the TDSB who have uh, an offer of gifted as an example. Um, and th those are determined by your residential uh, address. And that is your pathway if you uh, wish to stay in the gifted program. Um, you can apply to any of the gifted programs uh, in the city that are open to optional attendance, um, but there's not very many of those. And certainly the geography of the board would uh, play a significant role uh, because you don't, you know, you certainly don't want to uh, be living at uh, Jane and Dundas and traveling to uh, Birchmount and Danforth uh, to uh, a gifted program. And so th th these are some of the considerations that you need to, to think about. Um, you can't apply to attend a gifted program, you have to be offered the placement at the school. Um, what I would suggest to any of our families who are on this evening who do have students who are in a gifted um, uh, program, just because we have many of those, is to speak with your grade eight teacher and find out what is the typical pathway. And or you can visit uh, our uh, TDSB site and do a search under gifted. And there's a really uh, good map that shows, you know, the residents residential areas uh, by way of the Toronto map uh, and what, what schools uh, students attend. And again, that's by your residential address. For our, uh, developmental disability um, students and, and parents uh, who uh, are moving into the high school realm, it's really important to understand the significance of this transition. Um, and it can be daunting uh, for you as parents uh, to move your child from a small uh, elementary school environment uh, to the larger high school. And I wanted to acknowledge that because uh, as a principal who has had developmental disability programs in their school, I understand firsthand, um, you know, the worry that comes with such a big transition. Uh, and your, your children are also going to notice a difference. The bus route is different. Um, coming into the building is different. Um, you know, the busyness of a high school is different. And what I want to impart with you is that all of our schools that have DD programs um, and or MID programs, we understand completely the importance of ensuring a smooth transition for our new students coming from grade eight. Our spaces become available um, at the high school level for our DD programs um, through spaces that come open because of, of graduation. So students who are moving on uh, to post-secondary. So as we, um, uh, so as spaces come open, we know school X, you know, can accept four students or five students. What I would really encourage for any of our parents who are on the call um, uh, uh, tonight um, and and have concerns about uh, that transition for, for your children uh, is to speak with your current DD teacher um, and to speak with them about what is the typical you know, high school that child would go to so that you are ready and prepared through the IPRC placement process to advocate for your child um, and to ensure that um, you, know, you have a full understanding of the programming uh, that takes place at high school. I will say that all of the supports that you currently have in elementary, we also have in secondary for your child. And we will take the very best of care uh, for them. Uh, for any of our students who might have a physical handicap or a PH designation, uh, 
our pH schools uh, are, are barrier free schools. And so we have specific schools that have been set aside uh, because we know they have elevators. We know that there are no physical barriers to get in the way of students navigating, typically uh, in their wheelchair to get from class to class. And of course they would be attending regular classes with uh, uh, the other students of the school. Uh, so that would, you know, in it just as an overview um, is the transition piece and it takes place, as I said, uh, different to uh, the, the regular process because of the need for the review of the IPRC. We also have in grade eight a number of students who receive special education support uh, but are not formally identified. Um, and they would receive this uh, support by way of a, an IEP. Um, and what typically would happen as we close out the IP, IEP process in grade eight, there would be recommendations for the transition to grade nine. And in many cases, the IEP moves with the student to grade nine. In some cases, uh, the grade eight school determines uh, the student is fine, they don't need these additional supports anymore, and it's not recommended for the IEP. But we do receive at the high school level, um, all of the names of the students who have been receiving support, uh, so that we can continue that support when they get to us uh, in grade nine. One of the, um, uh, the things that I, I really need to encourage uh, for all of our parents, uh, but in particular those who have received special education support, if you have any concerns, uh, number one, speak to your current uh, grade eight teachers because they're very, very familiar. And you know they, they have kids who have moved on to high school, who've come back to tell them about the process. So have a chat with them, uh, but also don't hesitate to reach out to the grade nine school once it's determined that's where you're going uh, so that you can you know hear from the staff directly in the school and typically someone from the special education department will get back to you and be able to answer questions uh, that you might have all of our schools have academic supports for students in grade nine whether there's a previous special education uh, need or not and uh, that comes by way of our guidance department, our special education department, and every school has a student success team. In addition to that, if it's determined by the grade eight school, or once a student arrives uh, and, and starts with us, that uh, they need some additional support. We also have courses uh, that are called learning strategies courses. And we have these for students who have an IEP or who don't have an IEP. Um, and these help with the executive functioning type skills like organization, uh, homework help, et cetera, and, and how to study uh, and prepare effectively for success in high school. Um, and that is also available to students as well. Um, if we could move to the next slide, uh, Renee. Want to talk to our grade eight students who may be on the call um, and our parents about what to expect in high school. For four students uh, to begin with, uh, you're going to notice some big changes um, for you uh, coming into, into high school. Because number one, you're going to be the youngest again. So much like when you start it um, in kindergarten, or if you moved on to a, a middle school, um, you became the youngest, well, you're at that point again, and you're going to be in a very, very large school, much larger than your elementary school. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of big kids, um, much, much bigger than you. And certainly in terms of their physical maturation, uh, they're going to look different. And that can sometimes be a little bit intimidating. And part of the what to expect in high school piece for you is to think about these, these pieces of the puzzle and how you're going to, um, you know, approach them when you encounter them when you start high school. A couple of other things for students, uh, you know, there, there may be big changes like suddenly 
you know, you don't keep your things in a classroom, you keep them in a locker. And how do you know where your locker is? And how do you know where the classrooms are in the school? How do you read your timetable? How do you use a padlock? Um, and these are going to be for, for many of you, um, things that you're gonna navigate in stride. I want you to know that every student coming in into high school is feeling these exact same things. And we, uh, we have welcome programs for our uh, grade eight students once they start grade nine, uh, so that you are fully oriented to, you know, where everything is in the building and, you know, that you can find the cafeteria when you, you need to have your lunch and, you know, how to get to the library, um, you know, what the expectations are during lunch hour, et cetera. Um, but what you need to do to prepare yourself is to know it's going to be different. It, it, uh, it may or may not uh, be your same cohort of friends, so your friendship group, if you make a decision to go to a specialized program or you, you decide to apply on optional attendance somewhere else. Um, and so that's part of the piece that you need to prepare for as well, it, just in terms of how am I going to make friends and uh, what is it going to feel like maybe not to know anybody. Um, and it's important for you to reflect reflect on these pieces prior to actually starting in September um, so that you have some strategies under your belt for uh, dealing with these encounters when, you, when, when they surface uh, in September. For our parents, uh, if you already have a child in high school, or if this is your first child, um, one of the things that you're going to know is they really don't want to talk to you. They uh, are transitioning from being, you know, kind of under your wing to trying out their own wings. And you may note and notice uh, a distinct change. They don't necessarily want you dropping them off in front of the school. Um, they certainly are, uh, you know, not wanting you to be on the school council as the chair. Um, they kind of want to, you know, try things out on their own for the first time. And that is important. Uh, and it's important for you as a parent um, to know and understand, you know, that this is part of the process of growing up. They're moving by the time they graduate into young adulthood. Um, and it's to be expected. Uh, but the other thing is, is as a parent, um, it's still really, really important that you maintain involvement in your child's education. Uh, as much as they may say, don't go to parent-teacher interviews, you don't need to. Um, we're saying on our end, yes, please come. We want we want to be a partner with you to support your child as they navigate through to graduation. So show up, ask questions. And even if, you know, you know, nine times out of 10, when you're asked your child, how was school today? And they kind of mumble to you, fine. Uh, hold out for that one time when they tell you about an exciting project they're working on in their math class um, or, you know, uh, a, you know, a fabulous project that is taking place in geography, um, because uh, those are the moments that we hold out for. So you can expect it will be different. Um, they will continue to uh, become more mature. They will continue to, you know, be fiercely independent, um, but they still need you as a parent. And as a school, we still need you as a parent. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Um, next year, and if we can move to the next slide, um, Renee, uh, we have uh, as still, we don't know what's going to happen in terms of the pandemic, and I know that this is something that's on everyone's mind. Currently, right now, all of our schools are following a quadmester timetable, and that's what's on the bottom of the screen right now. And so our students at, at the high school level are taking two courses per quadmester, and they only attend school in the morning. In the afternoon, they, they do online learning um, for their courses. Um, so uh, if we, you know, there, there's a chance, we, because we, we don't know uh, timelines while there's positive news uh, about the vaccine, um, it, it's, it's still not clear uh, when we will be uh, in a, a safer environment for schooling. Um, so that could very well be the type of schedule uh, that your child uh, takes. Most of our schools uh, operate on a semester system when we're back into usual times. And so to the left 
uh, of your screen, you will see an example of a semester uh, timetable. There would be four courses taken semester one, and in semester two, the other four courses um, are taken. And then finally, we have uh, a number of courses, um, uh, sorry, a number of schools that are taking place, uh, taking a non-semestered environment. So in this situation, classes run from September until the end of June, and students uh, manage all eight of their courses throughout the entire school year. Um, they would have four courses on one day and a different four courses the next day, and that would alternate throughout the year. If we can um, move on to the next uh, slide, please. A couple of things that I would like to um, uh, uh, just have you consider in terms of the, the pandemic. Um, as I mentioned, we don't know what September is going to look like, but it is really important that you have these conversations with your child, I, I would say even starting now, uh, so that you prepare them for the transition, but also to uh, for the for the pandemic reality that we're living in right now. We know because of research that our students uh, have had a huge impact on their mental health and social emotional well being. And um, so for your child right now, they have that going on, whether or not they're sharing that with you or not, we know that that's sort of an undercurrent that's going on for all students. Uh, and then we kind of put on top of that, a huge big change in their life. Um, and it's, it's important in your in your parenting support of your child uh, to put these things out on the table and help your child unpack them um, so that you are prepared uh, as a parent to support your child in the ways that you as a parent can support them and on our end uh, we also will be working uh, towards supporting uh, your, your child as well. Uh, one of the key things that have surfaced from our meetings is parents uh, and students really worried about gaps in education that have taken place because of the pandemic. And what if I'm not caught up? And what if I, you know, what if I miss too much school? Uh, I want you to know that as the TDSB, we're fully and completely aware um, of what has happened from March of grade seven for your kids, all the way through to when we finish off uh, in June uh, before we get them in September. Um, and we're working in the background to make sure that we have a plan to help fill the gaps, uh, especially uh, in key foundational skills of numeracy and literacy. Uh, so I, I want to, you to rest assured uh, that it is completely on our radar um, and that each school would, will be working through, you know, a process to make sure that we get kids caught back up and back in stride uh, toward uh, graduation for grade 12, um, four and a half years from now. Couple of other considerations for you around the pandemic. Uh, for some of your uh, children, they have been out of an actual physical bricks and mortar school since last March. And if we're returning to school, that will be uh, like a, you know, an actual physical building uh, in September, that will be an adjustment for your child. Um, and it's important for you to talk that through. I would even suggest, you know, do a, an August run through of walking to the school or getting yourself to the school through public transit, however they normally would, um, so that it's not the first time that they're actually entering back to a school environment. Um, some of your kids right now are in a regular school and then they're gonna be moving to a regular school um, um, or depending on, on what happens with the pandemic. Uh, so that's a different type of consideration. And then certainly I know that we have many families who uh, are homeschooling uh, their, their children this year and have been since last March. And again, there are some considerations about 
helping your child with that transition back into the regular public education system um, that you will want to, you know, work through with your child and, and help them unpack some of uh, the anxieties that they might have about navigating back into the system again. Um, these are very real pieces. Um, and certainly I know our guidance teams at the schools, um, you know, have been made aware of this and will be working toward just making sure uh, that our grade eight students coming into grade nine are reassured that we're there to support and to help. And then my final piece that I'm gonna speak about, if we can move the slide, uh, Renee, is what happens if I accept my, accept admission somewhere and I change my mind. Um, one of the things that is uh, really, really, um, uh, challenging for us is making changes once the decisions have been made in March. And so it's really important that the school that you, you and your child makes for grade nine, um, that you're sure about it because undoing that isn't as easy as you might think. Uh, so for example, uh, if you, uh, you know, decided to go to your home school uh, rather than accepting the gifted placement, um, it's not just a matter of doing a quick change of your mind. Um, uh, if school, if certainly if schools already started in September, um, you have to wait until an IPRC review can happen again and another placement can be offered. Um, if you turn down a specialized school um, that you got into through lottery, um, uh, typically there is no turning back. They, they move on to others within their lottery piece um, and, and that chance would have to, you'd have to wait again to the following September. Um, so I, I wanna really implore you to, you know, really think about what it is um, that you're looking for in your particular school. I, I really want to encourage you to look at your community or your neighborhood school, your home school, uh, because of the excellent programs that are offered uh, there right within your residential area. Um, but most importantly, your child needs to feel that not only they will fit in um, but that the school in, in turn will be a good fit back to them. Um, they need to be able to envision themselves graduating and crossing the stage um, after four years at that school. Uh, so give it a lot of thought. Don't, you know, it shouldn't be a popularity contest. It certainly shouldn't be because um, of an arbitrary ranking system. It really does matter how your child feels. And uh, Dr. Rawlings, I'm going to pass things uh, back to you at this point so you can go over some important dates. Thank you. So we're going to talk about some important dates, uh, starting with what would have happened between November and December, uh, which is attending your elementary school virtual transition event. You may have already attended a virtual event hosted by your elementary school. I know that the virtual elementary schools hosted a series of events and the bricks and mortar schools are also hosting events. They may still be doing so up until the holidays and perhaps even into the new year. And they may be connecting with families in different ways. Between November and January, uh, you'll be attending secondary school open houses. These live virtual houses have already begun and will continue into January. And what's also great about our secondary schools is that they also have pre-recorded information sessions, either pre-recorded in advance or the pre-recording of their live open house available for you to view after. Also between November and January, the specialized programs have all their additional entrance requirements, as we mentioned earlier. So please visit the school website or contact the school for information about those deadlines. Some of those deadlines have passed, but some are also coming up. On January 11th, grade eight course selection opens, which is exciting. This is when, when you're in my blueprint, you'll be able to actually select courses for all the different schools in our board. And uh, you'll be able to select courses for the home school that is designated based on your address and all the schools that you've applied to under optional attendance. 
your grade eight teacher and grade eight school will be leading you through the course selection process through my blueprint. So you don't have to worry about doing that on your own. You will be supported by your elementary school. On January 29th, that's when all the optional attendance forms are due at the secondary schools. And as I mentioned before, and I'll reiterate now, if you go online, we have a fillable optional attendance form. That means you can type it up and save it. And then you can send it to your elementary principal who does have to sign it and can send it on your behalf to the secondary school. Um, you may also take it to the secondary school. And as I mentioned before, just contact the school to know how they would like to receive your optional attendance form. This year, we are accepting faxed, scanned and emailed optional attendance forms. February 12th is the deadline for you to hear about the status of your optional attendance application. And February 26th is the deadline for you to complete the course selection either at your home school or for the optional attendance school. Between February 12th and 26th, you may contact the school and let them know if you are accepting or not your optional attendance um, offer. So the next question is who to contact if you have any questions. All of your child's teachers Vice principals, principals, our secondary guidance counselors and program coordinators and specialized program coordinators at the school are all here to support your child through this exciting transition. I remember when I was in grade eight and I was so excited about the school I was going to, which school I was gonna to go to with my friends. Some of my friends were going to different schools, what courses I was gonna take, specialized programs. It was a very exciting time. And sometimes we lose that excitement when we're stressed out um, about the process, but it's important to just remember this is an exciting time for our grade eight students and families because you're beginning to map out your future. So please, please know that we are here to support you through this exciting transition. If you are in virtual elementary school, please connect with your grade eight teacher. If they don't have the answer, they will connect you with our admin, with the admin team at virtual school who will get you an answer. If you're interested in a specialized school or program, please contact that high school who can provide you with all the details about their specialized program. If you have questions around my blueprint and course selection, contact your grade eight school, your grade eight teacher and your grade eight principal or vice principal can support you with this. If, you're, if you have any questions about special education offers of placement, please also connect with your grade eight school. If you have questions about special education or additional academic supports in the high schools that you're interested in attending, please contact the high school. They can share with you all the amazing things they do in their special education department, their student success department, and all the other professional support services that are available for you at the school. In terms of some web resources, we have a website dedicated to the grade eight to nine transition. It's called Beyond Eight. And as you can see on your screen, you can find that by going to tdsb.on.ca, click on high school, going to high school, and then you will see Beyond Eight. In that Beyond Eight website, you will also find the short video that we showed you earlier, which is the how-to for course selection. It's currently housed in the sample timetable webpage. However, when course selection begins in January, there will be an additional web page in the Beyond Date site called Course Selection that will give you how-to instructions, um, a step-by-step -step guide in addition to this video and any other information um, that might help you with the course selection process. Before I close, I think I'll open it up and ask Georgia if there were any other questions that were asked in abundance in our Q&A that you'd like to answer. Uh, yes, I'm just uh, um, sorry. My, my I was just answering some questions, but my screen froze, uh, including my video. So I'm just going to speak from the background. Um, there have been a, a number of questions as to what do you do if you know I get accepted for optional attendance, but I already accepted my homeschool. Um, all of our dates coincide with one another, and so as such, uh, you you will have the choice uh, present it. And you have a you have a deadline, uh, you know, ultimately for all of your choices, uh, and that happens before the March break. Uh, so uh, 
the exception to that piece, of course, as I mentioned earlier, has to do with the IPRC placements. Um, so uh, this is this is key. We have some very very specific questions um, that are better uh, answered uh, by visiting the website of the individual schools. Things like whether or not a school has a swimming pool, is this school's gifted program open for optional attendance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so uh, what I would encourage you to do is, it, uh, is to augment the research you've already done up to this point. Um, make sure that you attend uh, Oh, I think um, Georgia's sound has closed. Um, so when she comes back in, we'll finish that. But on, um, I'll, I think I'll just close at this point. So I'll start by thanking everyone for staying with us through these top 10 uh, considerations and tips for the transition to high school. I'd like to thank all of our secondary counselors, our program coordinators, interpreters, and Margaret Porva supporting today's event. Thank you to George, it's always a pleasure to work with you. Thank you to Andrew Gold for spending your evening with us as an associate director and supporting this event. And of course, thank you to all of our grade eight families. We are so excited to be with you as you begin planning for high school. So we wish you all the best, good luck, and be sure to enjoy this transition beyond eight. The recording of this session will be available next week on the guidance page of the TDSB website, which is tdsb.on.ca forward slash guidance. So thank you all for spending your evening with us. We hope you have a wonderful evening. Good night.